Altered's first set, Beyond the Gates, is fully spoiled, and some people have already received their Kickstarter boosters. While the rest of us get ready to open packs and make decks, I thought I'd do a set review to help you know what cards to look out for. I'll be rating each card by hero on a scale from 1 to 3, where a 1 means I think it'll see little to no play for that hero, a 2 means I think it'll see play in some lists for that hero, and a 3 means I think it's basically a must run. Some of the good cards may not end up seeing play because they're a little meta specific or because people opt to run a different rarity of the same name, but even if these ratings don't perfectly predict the use rates of the cards, I still think they're a great starting point for assessing the potential options available to us in the first set. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Now let's jump into the review. I'll be leading off the set review with cards from Axiom. The three heroes we'll be rating them for are Sierra and Oddball, Trace and Rossum, and Subhash and Marmo. I actually think that Axiom is one of the only factions where all of the heroes will be relatively viable in the first set. Sierra will really shine in decks that have synergy with Brass Bugs or use big permanents to take control of the late game. Trace has a great resource game which can let you play a ton of cheap characters and he can set up cards that want to be in the reserve once he reaches 5 counters. And Subbash has a great early game, robot synergies, and can set up cards in the reserve as early as day 1 at the cost of using up your resources faster. With these varying strengths in mind, let's take a look at the Axiom card pool. Keylon Elemental is definitely a strong card, for Sierra I give it a 2. The stats are pretty good but it doesn't really have a ton of synergy with her. But for Trace and Rossum I think it's definitely a 3, it's one of your best ways to get counters on him in the early game. And for Subhash, I think it's just a 2. It has a little bit of redundancy with your hero power, and while you can put it into the reserve if you don't want to use the effect in hand, I don't think it's necessary there. For the rare version, I give a 1 for each hero. I think that you don't really get that much extra benefit out of the changes, and most decks will just opt for the common if they run it at all. For Foundry Engineer, I give it a 2 for each hero. I haven't been able to playtest this card a lot, and it's not super flashy, so I'm having a little bit of trouble knowing how important it is. I can definitely see some use cases in it for each hero, because a lot of them are going to be running some amount of permanence or benefit from having cheap characters. For the rare version, I think it's a 1 pretty much now for Trace, because you're definitely going to have better rares and you don't play as many permanents as the other heroes, but for the other two, I'm going to leave it as a 2 because I think it could see play. Next is Ogin. I'm going to give it a 3 for Sierra because you'll be summoning a lot of robots with your permanence or her hero effect. Maybe I'm giving him a little too much credit because you might already be winning by the time you have a lot of robots in play, so this card could be a little win more, but I still think it's going to be really good. For Trace, you have the least access to robots, so I think this is basically a 1, and Subash is probably the strongest home for Ogin. I think it's a definite 3 here because you can get robots so easily with your hero effect, and also with Copelli, you can do some insane combos in the early game. I think the rare version's a little bit of overkill, but I'll still give it a 3 for Sierra. Her games tend to go longer, so I think you'll be able to take advantage of it more. For Trace, I think this is still a 1, and for Subhash, I'm only going to give it a 2 now because I think that you're often going to want to use this card before you have enough mana to use the extra effect. Looking at Foundry mechanic, I think this is a definite 3 for Sierra. This is your best way to set up an early hive and just super powerful all around. For Trace and Rossum, I honestly think this is probably a 3 as well. It's a really easy way to get quick counters onto your hero, and I feel like Trace can benefit a lot from small characters to play once Haven's out. For Subhash, I think this has similar benefits to Trace, but I feel like since you can run out of resources, you won't necessarily need it as much. I definitely think though it'll still be running some decks that are using permanence or have a little bit of better resource game, so I'll still give it a 2. For the rare version, I'm going to give it 2s all across the board. The bump in stats is nice and makes it comparable to Izmir's Stargazer, so I could see players opting to run it, but I don't think it's necessary anywhere. Axiom Salvager can be pretty great as well. I think for Sierra it's probably a 2. It's nice to have an extra 1 drop and it can help you dig farther into your deck, but it's not really necessary there. But for Trace and Subhash, I think this is a 3. You can put it straight into the reserve if you want, and just having a constant flow of cards is going to be so important with them. The rare version seems like overkill for Sierra, so I'm just going to give it a 1. But for Trace and Subhash, I think this is still a 3. If you put it straight into the reserve, you don't have to worry about the fact that it's now worse when played from hand, and a 1 cost character that resupply will be so good with Haven. Tinkerbell is a late reveal, but I think it's one of the best that we've seen. For Sierra, I think it's just a 2 because it doesn't really have a ton of synergy with her, but Sabotage is strong and it has pretty good stats. One of the only downsides of Tinkerbell is that it's harder to surprise your opponent since it doesn't have the Sabotage until played from Reserve. For Trace and Subhash, I think this is a 3. You can put it straight into the Reserve, and now you're getting the better stats without even missing out on the surprise. Looking at the rare version, I think this is basically now a 1 for Trace and Subhash. The discount from hand is basically 
basically irrelevant. You'll mostly be painting this from the reserve, so you don't really get anything out of it. But now I think this starts to maybe look a little bit better for Sierra. I don't know if it's going to be worth upgrading this to a rare slot. I still just give it a 2 in Sierra, but depending if she wants to run this card, I think she could go either way for the rarity. With the full set, Gion Assembly Overseer is a little underwhelming. For Sierra and Subhash, I think it's just a 1. There's probably better things to be running. If it's going to see play anywhere, I think it's with Trace because the stats are okay and you can take advantage of the fact that it's a cheap character, but I still think it's only a 2 at best. For the rare version, I think things flip a little. It seems like Overkill and Trace, so I'm just going to put it as a 1, but now it starts to have synergies with Brass Bug Hive, so I think it'll be a 2 for Sierra and Subhash. There are several options for cards with similar effects, so I don't think it's a must run, but it's definitely worth considering. Amelia Earhart's definitely going to have a place in the meta. It doesn't really have synergy with Sierra, so I think it's going to be a 1 there, but for Trace and Rossum and Subash and Marmo, I definitely think this is a three. Being able to skip playing this from hand and just get it as two worth of stats for one from the reserve is so strong. I don't love how the rare turned out. I think it's just a one for everyone because the decks that are running it didn't really want to play it from hand, so you aren't getting much benefit out of the changes. Three Little Pig seems pretty unimpressive to me. I'm gonna give it a one everywhere. I think it could definitely have some use in any of the heroes, but it's a little hard to set up and I think there are better cards with the full set. The rare version is the same story, especially early on before you have two permanents, you don't really get anything out of the changes, and I have a hard time believing this is going to be better than other cards. The biggest competition for Kamenade Lovelace is the rare version. I still think though it's pretty good in all of the heroes, so I'll probably give it twos everywhere. Even though you won't get a draw often with Subhash or Trace, the synergy is still there. And with Sierra, this is a pretty natural fit. As for the rare, I think we can bump the scores up now to a 3 for Trace and Subhash. It has perfect synergies with your game plan and is going to be one of the best cards for your resource game. Coppelia works hand in hand with Ada. Even though it is a robot which can have synergy with Hive, I don't think it's going to see that much play in Sierra, so I'm just going to give it a 1. But for Trace and Subhash, this is a great way to bank advantage. In Subhash, you'll be able to make terrifying boards with Ogun in the early game, and in Trace, you can get a counter for zero mana. Since Coppelia gains fleeting when played with her effect, I don't think you can take as much advantage out of the better stats since she only hits the board once, but I still think it could see some place in Subpassion Trace, so I'll give it a 2. Sierra would probably just play this normally from hand, so maybe you can take more advantage of the better stats, but with so many options, I even think something like Geon might be a little better, so I'll still give it a 1. Axiom Scrambler feels a little bit like Pack Filler. It is a common form of Sabotage, but I think Axiom's a little spoiled with better options. I'll give it a 1 everywhere because I don't expect it to see play unless Sabotage is just like super important in the format. And while the rare is cheaper from hand, the stats are just okay compared to other sabotage cards, so I think it's going to be outshined, so I'm just going to keep a 1 for each hero. Foundry Armor is a pretty great card. Heroes that can put this straight into the reserve are going to benefit from it more. I think it'll actually be best in Subhash, where I'll give it a 3. He's already looking for bug synergies, and I feel like that's a natural home. For Trace, since it doesn't really help you before you have 5 counters, I don't think it fits as well, so I'm just going to give it a 1. And for Sierra, while this is alright, I think you'll probably want to play the rare, so I'll give it a 2. As I was just implying, I think this rare fits great in Sierra. It's one of your best early game plays and only gets stronger with time, so I think it deserves a 3. For the other hero, since you have ways to put the common straight into the reserve, I don't think the upgrade is worth it, so I'll just give it a 1. Frankenstein seems like a pretty cool card. You'd probably want to use this with Brass Bug Hive or Bravo's Haven, but I think it's going to be a lot easier to use it with Haven. In Sierra, you'll probably have to play this from hand, and I don't think the Lost Tempo is worth the payoff, so I'll just give it a 1. For Trace and Subash, I feel like this fits so perfectly. Once Haven's out, it's like a huge Axiom Salvager, so I'm going to give it a 3 for both of them. And I actually think the upgrade for the rare is pretty beneficial. For Sierra, I still think this is hanging around a 1, but for Subash and Trace, I think this is still a 3. That lower cost is going to make it a lot easier to chain multiple characters as you resupply and play them to get boosts with Haven. Athena seems like a great value card, but having two permanents can be a little hard to achieve until later in the game. I think as the permanent pool expands, this card could get better, but especially for the common, which is so low tempo from hand, I think it's just a 1 in Sierra. I feel like this could see play in Trace, but having tested it, I feel like a lot of times it's a pretty bad resupply early, and in the late game, you're not really running out of resources, so it's not necessary to have this. For Subhash though, where you're more likely to run out of resources and you might be playing more permanents as well, I think this is probably the best fit. I'm gonna say it's a 3, which might be a little high once we have time to test things, but in theory it seems like it'll be a great fit. The rare version getting the boost from hand makes this a lot more playable in Sierra, so now I think it could be a 2, but for Subhash and Trace where you can put it directly into the reserve, this is pretty unnecessary, so I think it's a 1 for them. And Ganesha, while having a cool effect, seems a little inconsistently good and doesn't have enough payoff for being so expensive, so I'm going to give it a 1 everywhere. The best case scenario would be you play this after having double hive down, but at that point you're already winning.
winning and in any other situation it's not looking very good. While the rare version is cheaper, I don't think that changes things much, so I'll keep it as a 1 for everyone. With the right permanent reveals in the future, this could definitely see play, but I don't think we're there yet. Bravo's Tracer seems cool, but I think most heroes are going to have better options. I think Sierra is looking for a more value strategy, so I'll give it a 1, and I'll also give it a 1 for Traced, because the fleeting can make it hard to get counters. If this fits anywhere, it'll be sub hash, so I'll give it a 2 there. But I think most likely, if Bravo's Tracer sees play in Axiom, it's going to be the unique form. I was pretty excited about Bravo's Vanguard early on, but now that I've tested it, I feel like it can be pretty awkward until you have a lot of mana. I'll still give it a 2 for Trace and Sub Ash because I think it could see some play, but it doesn't really have synergy with Sierra, so I think it's just a 1 there. And Haven Bouncer is going to get 2s across the board. I think that this card is definitely a little bit just meta dependent. If people really want Sabotage, it'll be a great pick, but if not, it's going to be outclassed by other characters. While Martingale is a fan favorite, I don't think it really has a place in Axiom. For Trace, I feel like you have better 1 drops, and for Sub Ash, if you want the support effects, I think you might choose to take those from Ouroboros Croupier or something else as well. So I'll give it a 1 for those two heroes, and for Sierra, I think this could maybe be a 2. Even though I don't see people maxing out on this, maybe the extra 1 drop will be nice, or this can provide a way to have more consistency as essentially like a 4th or 5th copy of Mechanic to more easily discount your Hive. Ouroboros Incaster has decent stats for a 2 drop, but I don't really feel like it fits in most decks. It seems a little unnecessary in Sierra, so I'll give it a 1. And in Traced, with the timing of returning a card to the hand, you won't actually get a counter, so I think it's a 1 there as well. For Subhash, it could be cool to try and loop two of these for infinite resources in the late game and you might want the card advantage that this provides so I think this could at least be a two. Anansi is a card that I might be underrating a little but I don't really see it fitting in Sierra so I just give it a one. And for Trace and Subhash I definitely think this could see some play so I'll give it a two for both of them. With their hero effects this has the potential to get as high as five in stats but I think since that's a little hard to set up this might be inconsistently good and so I don't think it's like a must run or anything. But if Munadru becomes popular this would work really well with him. I think Lyra Chronicler only really has a place in Trace, so I'm just going to give it a 1 for the other heroes. It's a great way though to get a free counter in Trace, so I'm going to give it a 3 there. While it can help accelerate your counters, I don't think it's totally necessary though, so maybe people will find lists that can build counters fast enough anyway and this will start to not make the cut. The higher the cost of a card, the more impressive it needs to be to see play, and I don't know if Ouroboros Croupier gets quite there. I think this can fit pretty well in Sierra since you'll use it to dig for Hive on 4 mana, and then on the next day you can use it to discount a Hive that you found, so I think it deserves at least a 2 there. For Trace though, I don't think you really need the extra draw, and you'd probably prefer to get a card that can help you get counters early instead of one that's only good once your hero is already online, so I think this is a 1. But it could be alright in Subhash, so I'm going to give it a 2. You can use it to cheat out better stats early on, and in the late game it can help stabilize your resources. Amahai seems a little bit underwhelming for a rare, so I'm just going to give it a 1 everywhere. Deck binning is nice, but I think you'd want to play more cards in a turn. And I feel like Mowgli is a card that's almost good too. It doesn't really fit in Sierra, so I think it's a 1. And in Traced, while it can be cheap from Reserve, I think there are better low drops, so I'll give it a 1 as well. If this sees play, I think it'll probably be in Subhash, so I'll give it a 2. In an aggressive version, you might like the skewed stats to be able to go 2-1 on one of the early days. I think Inari is a pretty solid card. In Sierra, it has pretty good stats early and can trigger your Hive later, but I don't think it's a must run, so I'll just give it a 2. For Trace, you won't have quite as good of permanence to use its effect on, so I think it's just a 1. But Subhash could easily run Hive as well, and this can make up for the fact that you don't have Sierra's hero effect when you play your hive, so I think it's at least a 2. While Daughter of Yggdrasil has great stats, giving a card to your opponent is no joke. I don't really see a reason to use it in Sierra, so I think it's just a 1. And for Trace, I think it's a 1-2, because you usually have plenty of stats when you play cheap characters with Haven. Maybe people will try this out in Subhash because it is so aggressive, so I'm going to give it a 2. And I think it has the potential to be played if people want to run Muna Druid. Speaking of Muna Druid, with a strong support ability, I think this could see play in Subhash or Trace, but you might have to tweak your deck a bit to make sure you have good 3-drop targets. There's not really a great way to use it though in Sierra, so I think it's just a 1 there. Moon of Merchant is almost exactly what you want for several heroes, but I feel like the high cost from the reserve just makes it a little worse than some of the other options at our disposal. Because of that, I think it'll be edged out by better commons and rares, so I honestly feel like it can only get a 1 for each of these heroes. While people might try it out early on, I don't think it's going to be sticking in a lot of lists. Monolith Runescribe is almost impossible to trigger and trace, so I'm going to give it a 1. And while it works in Subhash, I found that I often overfill my reserve when I use it, so it's probably just a 1 because I've cut it from most of my lists. And while this works in Sierra, by the time you're summoning Brass Bugs, you've probably drawn into the cards you need, so I think it's unnecessary as well. Frog Prince honestly has decent stats for a 2-drop, but as a rare, I think you're only going to run this if you want the support ability as well. That probably means it's a no for trace, so I'm going to give it a 1. And for Subhash and Sierra, it's definitely not a must run, but I think people might 
experiment with it, so I'm gonna give it a two for now. Sean D'Arc provides some incredible value, especially in Sierra, I think this could find a home. It is a little bit of a late game card though, and maybe win more, so I think it's a two since it's not a must run. And with lower chances of having synergy with Trace and Subash, I think it's just a one there and unlikely to see play. Moonlight Jellyfish seems pretty hard to trigger right now, since most of your robots come into play at noon, so I think it's pretty much a one everywhere. If you aren't using the effect, the stats aren't better than other one drop alternatives, and so until we get more cards, I don't think this will see play. Stargazer is a super solid one drop. You can use it to flip an expedition or as like a pseudo after you. I'm sure some people might choose to play it in Sierra, but I feel like we'll probably end up running different cards, and so I'm gonna give it a one for now. But in Traced and Subhash, this is exactly what you wanna be pairing with things like your Haven, so I think it's a three for both of them. Baku's effect is super interesting. If the top tier decks have a bad resource game, I think you could tech this in basically any hero, but I feel like Traced and Sierra are more likely to make the game go long, so I'll probably give it a two for them and just a one for Subhash. People might not agree with me on Hooked, but I think that the common's a little underwhelming and I'm just gonna give it a 1 for all of the heroes. While it can be really good in very specific situations, like against certain bureaucrats or against some of the Lyra cards with zeros and stats, I feel like it'll be dead too often unless it's like the perfect response to the meta. With the changes to the rare, now it's a great card draw engine as well. Most of the time you'll probably just be using this to draw and then using the effect just to guarantee that you can trade expeditions. I don't think it's super necessary in Tracer Sierra, so I'm still gonna give it a one, but I think Subhash could take advantage of it more, so I'll give it a two there. I think Boom's a pretty great card for Axiom because it can answer a wide variety of threats. In Sierra, you contribute your tokens, and in Subhash and Trace, you'll have lots of one drops anyway, so I think it's at least a two in all of the characters. For the rare version, I don't think you'll really have permanents you want to tribute in Trace, so I feel like it's probably a one, but I think it stays a two in Subash and Sierra. If you run the rare armored jammer, you'll probably be running this as well. And if people play expensive threats, you'll want to run at least one of the rarities of this card. Mechanical training can be great with the right permanence in play, but if you're just using it to resupply, I think it's a little underwhelming. Because of that, I'm just gonna give it a one in Traced and Subhash, but for Sierra, I think it could be a three. By the time you have Hive out, you're probably already winning, but the fact that you can get six worth of stats for three mana with this probably means it's worthwhile. I feel like the rare though is a little bit overkill and in most situations, the common would have still been good anyway. So that paired with the fact that it needs a lot of setup to be good makes me think I'm just gonna give it a one for all of the heroes. Keelan Burst seems like one of the best generic removal. I'd give it a two for everyone, but I think there will be so many cards that this will be good against in the meta that it honestly probably deserves a three everywhere. It's not great to resupply with Traced and Subhash, but I think most decks are gonna at least have to run some removal. I don't love the rare because until you have the right setup, this is just a more expensive version of the common, but it could definitely get some value if the game's go long for Sierra, so maybe it deserves a two, but for sure it's just a one for the other heroes. Harvest is all right, but I think it's just too low tempo. Since we have better options, I think it'll just end up being a one everywhere. And teamwork training is hard to rate as well. Since it has fleeting, it's not great for your resource game, but the low cost of two does mean you could make some favorable trades and maybe get ahead in expeditions with this. I think it's probably a one in Sierra because you won't have a lot of characters until later in the game, but in Traced and Subhash, this might be a two. I think it'll just depend on how well it trades into the meta. You definitely don't love resupplying this either, but maybe in the right meta, this will be better than Keylon Burst. I think most of the time you'll probably prefer Boom to Sticky Note Seals just because it's a little more flexible, but if everyone's running high cost cards, this will definitely see play. I'll give it a two in Sierra because I think it's a little harder for her sometimes to use the common Boom, but for Trace and Subhash, until the meta develops, I think this is definitely a one because it's too likely to mess up your engine when you resupply it at a bad time and I think Open the Gates is pretty underwhelming. It's only worthwhile if you have a way to buff the bugs, and not getting to choose which expedition they go into is pretty poor, so I think it's just a one everywhere. Kraken's Wrath, along with most of the removal, is gonna kind of depend on the meta. I think the right Sierra and Trace list could definitely use this, so I'm gonna give it a two for them, but I feel like it's too likely in Subass that you'll have a small hand and draw this at the wrong time, so I think it might just be a one for him. Brass Bug Hub's honestly a little underwhelming as a permanent. For Traced and Subash, I don't really see a reason to play it, but because it triggers your hero effect, and you want to have some bug synergies, I think it'll see a lot of play in Sierra until we get a better replacement, so I'll give it a three for now. Now though, the rare version is definitely a one in Sierra since you don't even get the hero effect, and for Trace, it still seems unnecessary. If it sees play, it might be in Subhash because you'll probably be running Ogun and things, but at that point, you'll be spending a lot of mana at noon, so it might not actually work that well in practice. The effect on Axiom Reprocessor is honestly super strong. I think a lot of heroes could really benefit from that free card every day, but I think the tempo loss is just too great to overcome, and because of that, I'm just gonna give it a one for each hero. 
The extra card from the rare version doesn't really fix my main problems with this card, so I think it just stays a 1 for everyone. Keon Cylinder doesn't have a ton of synergy with any of the heroes, and I think if people are going to run it, they'll probably opt for the rare version, which is a little more flexible, so I'm just going to give the common ones all around. The rare still doesn't synergize with Sierra, so I think it's going to maintain the 1 status, but for Subash and Trace, this could be a 2. It can give you a little bit of redundancy having more targets for things like Frankenstein, and make it easier to have 2 permanents in play for Athena, but I think most people running it won't be using a full three copies. And Keelonic Generator feels like another pack filler. If decks want value, they'll probably opt for the reprocessor instead, so I think this gets ones all around. The rare feels like a side grade, I'm not even sure if it's better, so I think it maintains the one status. I just don't think games are going to go long enough to really get value out of this. The common armored jammer is in a rough position. Most common sabotage give you a body and removal for 3 mana and so only getting the sabotage is a little underwhelming. As such it's probably only worthwhile if you're using it as the second permanent to be able to meet the requirements for some of your characters but this honestly just feels like a 1 everywhere. On the other hand though, now that the rare gets to sabotage when it leaves play, you can get 2 sabotages out of a 2 drop. You can definitely combo this with the rare boom, but you can also just play 3 permanents and then discard this in the evening. With things like Frankenstein that can re-trigger this as well, I think this could honestly see some play in any of the heroes. As for the Foundry Axiom Bastion, I think it's a little humorous that this is honestly probably better in Bravos, while the Bravos Bastion might be better in Axiom. For now though, I think we're still just waiting on a couple of characters with the right effects to make this worthwhile. I don't see you running this in Traced, but it can get all right value in Sierra and Subhash, so it definitely might see play, so I'm going to give it a 2 for them. The rare version gains an on-play effect, which you can trigger with some of your characters. I don't think the extra cost is going to be worth it for the card draw, unless you're running a lot of cards that are going to let you re-trigger that effect. Personally, I think we'll be running the common for now, but maybe this rare could see some play in Subhash and Sierra, but I still think it's unlikely to see play in Traced. And while the common hive may be good, I think it's just totally outclassed by the rare, so I'm going to give it 1s across the board. If you run Brass Bug Hive, you're going to be opting for this version, and it's a definite 3 of in Sierra. It's the best card to combo with her effect, and honestly probably one of the only reasons to play her right now. I think Hive is so good that people will alter their list to play it in Subhash and Trace, but it's not necessary in either of them, so I'm just going to give it a 2. As for Haven Bravo's Bastion, I think it's definitely the card you're building around for Subhash and Trace, so I think it'll be a 3 for both of them. And it's honestly so good that even though it doesn't have synergy with Sierra, I bet some people are going to find a way to fit it in anyway, so maybe it's even a 2 for her as well. But I think I think the Lyra Bastion just doesn't quite hit the mark. It's going to be the easiest to play in Sierra with her effect, but Traced and Subhash would benefit from it more. I think the effect could be pretty strong and help you fix your luck over time, but it just feels a little bit unnecessary and like too much of a tempo loss, so for now I think I'll just give it a 1 in all of the heroes. While I rated the Ouroboros kind of harshly, I think there may be a place for it in a dedicated deck that runs 3 copies and maxes out on resupply. It's definitely something I'll be exploring in the near future. Are there any other cards that we covered that you think deserve a better rating if used properly or that you think I overrated? And what Axiom decks are you looking to try out? Let me know in the comments. With 5 factions left, I'm realizing it'll take quite a while to do all of the reviews and I'm trying to decide if it's worth it. If you really like this video, make sure to let me know and I'll consider getting started on the others. Or let me know what factions you'd be most interested in seeing next. If I don't get enough of a response, I might do an abbreviated version to finish things up a little faster or move on to other topics. Leave a like and subscribe to show your support and as always, thanks for watching.